God bless everybody today. It's December 27th of 2023. This is a Middle East update. There's a lot going on, so let's look at what's happening out here. Um, this first article, we uh, have done a retaliatory strike. And this article indicates that the U.S. carries out airstrikes on sites used by Iran-based, Iran-backed forces in Iraq. Um, if you go down and look into the article, they hit three different sites on Monday uh, for this attack that wounded three American personnel earlier in the day. Um, it indicates that since October 7th, this article indicates, I believe, we've had approximately 103 attacks um, since October 17th, actually. And so there's a lot going on over here. And we only, this is about the fifth time we've been to retaliatory strikes. If you take the average of that, basically for every 20 attacks, uh, we attack uh, once. Um, or we hit multiple sites in a specific attack. So we're not really doing a turn here and that's why we're getting attacked so much because they're not doing enough to show force out here and that's about the only thing they understand is force and so until that happens these attacks are going to continue on our bases at this time. And I believe that these uh, attacks are going to accelerate because now we've um, watched an attack on Damascus that's killed this top uh, Iranian uh, officer. Um, remember Trump had killed Soleimani a while back, a um, few years back, and they issued a warning that they were going to retaliate against that. We're in this process of having this war now. Iran's threatening uh, Israel also um, about this attack. But this is, uh, has to do with these attacks on our bases in Iraq and Syria because this guy had a lot of those operations. And so now that he's been removed, this is um, causing Iran some issues. And now they're threatening to basically attack us um, and Israel in this process. And so um, Iran is threatening Israel with retaliation after the senior officer of the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps was killed in an airstrike on Monday in Syria. And so just realize that this is going to ramp up because um, anytime you see um, these types of actions take place where they take out a top leader, uh, usually there's a ramp up shortly after that. And then I indicated a few years ago the Soleimani guy had died in uh, 2020 in a U.S. drone attack. So um, we are eliminating some of these higher uh, level leaders and this is then causing uh, the other side to retaliate in a stronger method so now one of the things i've been talking about for i don't know six years now is daniel 8 and how i think that's going to affect us as we move forward now realize that most people believe that daniel 8 is a history lesson or something that happened in the past and it did but it's going to reoccur in the future. And no one is talking about the Daniel 8 prophecies. Actually, I just talked to a friend of mine about this. And if you go into Daniel 7, he's talking about these four beasts that rise up. That create a beast kingdom in the fourth kingdom that rises. And it's a footprint of the three kingdoms um, prior to that. And so you need to understand that there's... A footprint that is given to you in Daniel 8 based on the statue of Nebuchadnezzar. Um, the head of gold, the silver, way, uh, silver shoulder and chest, and then the bronze waist. These are the areas that he warned you about that would effectively be the footprint of the beast kingdom as it moves forward. Because when you see these 10 nations that get ready to come against Israel in Ezekiel 38 and 39, once Daniel 8 plays out and Iran is absorbed, you're going to watch these 10 nations head towards Israel and they're going to be decimated. This is going to then 
create a residue of four regions and then a little horn will come out and overthrow the three regions and turn them into a beast kingdom so you need to understand that and you can find that in daniel 7:24. it indicates that 10 nations form first after that or after them we would see a little horn rise and overthrow three regions and so i always have indicated that you'll start out with 10 nations of radicalized Muslims that will be decimated and that will form a residue of four regions same footprint four regions that will fill that vacuum a little horn will come forward and overthrow or three regions will capitulate to him and that will then form a beast kingdom from those footprints okay the totality of those four regions will be the footprint of the beast kingdom as we move forward i've showed you those footprints on other videos they reflect alexander the great's footprint they reflect the ottomans footprint in world war one and so if you go to the old maps that i've been showing you you'll realize that this is all about the ottoman footprint in the past so when you go back and you look at Nebuchadnezzar's statue, you realize that he was talking about Nebuchadnezzar being the head of gold. And this would reflect a kingdom or footprint as we move forward into the future. Actually, he talked about three footprints. He talked about the head of gold, which was the Neo-Babylonians. He talked about the breasts and arms of silver, which were the Medo-Persians. Medos, the Kurds, and the Persian Empire. He talked about the belly and thighs of bronze, the Greco-Macedonian Empire, and how you, these reflect three animals in Daniel 7. The lion reflects the Babylonians, the bear reflects the Medo-Persians, and the leopard reflects the Greco-Macedonians, which is in this case Turkey, and that when you get to the footprint of these three combined regions, they make a beast kingdom region at the end. And so that's what I said. When you come down here to the feet of clay and iron, which is the Ottomans, which is the same footprint as these three up here, you'll realize that ten nations will form first, which is the Ottoman Empire, which is the seventh kingdom, in the kingdoms of the Jews that have been in captivity, they've been in captivity under seven different kingdoms to today, which is the Ottomans. We're still actually under the Ottoman Empire. Everybody thought that was destroyed in World War I, but we're still under this Ottoman Empire. When we see that six seal event, because I believe Erdogan is the first seal, and you see that destruction of those ten nations, they will form down into four regions, then a beast kingdom because the four regions um, will have an antichrist come out and then he'll overthrow three other regions and then turn that into a beast kingdom you can see that here based on the the uh, ten nations i've indicated here um, armenia sort of stuck in the middle of everything here so that's i've added that to azerbaijan but these will be um, the areas that I think you need to be watching that create the beast kingdom. Once those ten nations are destroyed down to uh, four regions, then that uh, turns into a beast kingdom over time. And here's another chart that I did that sort of breaks this down. You can see the statue, and I go through each of the chapters. Um, this can be found on my site at endofdayssurvival.com. Um, there's some PDFs on the front. I'll show you that in a second. But as you go through these chapters, 4, 5, and 6, you'll realize in Daniel that you'll realize that they turn into these animals in 7, which show you a footprint that basically turns into a Daniel 8 event. Okay? And that shows you here. Okay? So these footprints from this statue of gold silver and bronze which make up these footprints here which are all approximately in the same area end up being an ottoman footprint in the future called the base kingdom and you can see that footprint here it's the same footprint as the ottoman empire in world war one before it was broken up 
but it's never gone away. And there's no kingdom between the seventh and the eighth kingdom. The seventh kingdom was the Ottoman Empire, and I showed you that in the feet of clay and iron. So when you get to the eighth kingdom, you realize that you've moved into the beast kingdom. So there's a transition here as we move forward. So you can see all these charts on endofdaysurvival.com. You just go into this page. It's a Wix free site, so I don't sell anything out here. You go down uh, about halfway down the page or so, uh, just under the banner. Uh, you'll see these PDFs. You can see all the different st uh, PDFs and charts about Nebuchadnezzar's statue, the breakdown of Daniel 7, uh, 2, 7, and 8, and how all these different things uh, affect us. You can look at the paradigm here, all the different charts, and then there's actually videos on the site that um, I try to stay updated with occasionally. But this is escalating, and so we need to keep our eye abreast of Daniel 8 and how the Kurds are going to affect us in the future and how the Kurds will align with Iran because Turkey is going to force that issue on them and this is going to change the Middle East as we move forward. So it indicates that MIT strikes nearly uh, 50 facilities of the PKK terrorists in Syria. The PKK are the Kurds. Uh, MIT is the National Intelligence Organization um, for Turkey, and so the Turkey uh, government is going in and hitting many more targets than they had been in the past. And so I keep talking about how they're going to soften these areas up and eliminate a lot of these threats prior to this invasion, and they have been doing this for some time, and the Kurds are in a very... A precarious situation because they have nowhere to go and they're going to be driven into Iran's court before this is over and once you see that alignment happen between uh, the Kurds and Persia or Iran um, you will see a Daniel 8 prophecy play out where Turkey will go over and destroy both these nations and then once Iran falls they'll be absorbed into Ezekiel 38 and 39 and you'll watch Turkey lead 10 nations against Israel uh, before this completes and we see this all happening in the first six seals of Revelation because you're still in the birth pains and sorrows you've not seen an antichrist on the ground and you've not seen a treaty signed yet and so until that happens you are in the birth pains and sorrows and you will be in the birth pains and sorrows until you see that antichrist sign that treaty which then turns this into a tribulation period once you hit abomination of desolation then it converts this all into great tribulation and so we need to understand where we are in time and we're not in tribulation or great tribulation you're just in the birth pains and sorrows we're just watching the first four seals break in front of us and we're moving towards a six seal event which i will I think will happen around the end of February. We'll see in the first part of March. We'll see how that turns out. But of these 50 targets, they're hitting infrastructure and uh, soft targets or people. Um, if they can find people that matter out here, um, convoys, different things like that, they're hitting. And so um, Turkey's not going to let up on this. They've been talking about how uh, these Kurds are a terrorist organization. And this is part of what's holding up this Sweden ascension is that we had all those disruptions in Sweden with the Koran burnings and different things earlier in the year that this has caused Turkey a lot of problems with Sweden and how they've been holding up this ascension for some time. And this is just another article to show you that Turkey's been bombing different groups or areas um, in both Syria and Iraq, and this is an ongoing process. And in the same process here, we're having Baghdad coming out and condemning U.S. strikes on military, on the Iraqi military positions um, that we've been hitting back. Um, it's amazing. We can't attack the people that attack us. Um, We've been hit with over 103 attacks. We've retaliated five different times. And now we're getting uh, basically scolded by Baghdad condemning the U.S. Uh, strikes on Iraqi military positions that are clearly 
um, hostile to us and that we're trying to eliminate these problems. But um, the Iraqi government has condemned us on Tuesday overnight as U.S. airstrikes on military position said it killed one service member and wounded 18 other people. And the Iraqi government indicated that this was a clear hostile act towards Iraq and their government. And so this is going to become more of a problem as we try to defend our people that they're not going to allow us to do that. Um, says that the United States is carrying out retaliatory airstrikes on Monday in Iraq after a one-way drone attack earlier in the day by an Iran-aligned militant group um, has left one service member in critical dis condition and wounded two others. And that's what I've talked about. They won't do anything unless our guys get hurt. They, they aren't even allowing um, the guys on the ground that run the battalions and different things, the, pe the leaders on the ground, to actually react. They have to get approval from Joey Biden or they can't do anything. Um, so they're, they're not even allowing us to defend ourselves at this time. And that is a real problem. Um, the government condemned the U.S. strikes as an unacceptable violation of Iraqi sovereignty. And so, like I say, as you see more and more attacks um, and we retaliate finally against these people that keep constantly attacking us, that's going to have pushback on our side. And so um, it's just going to end up bad over here for our people. I've been talking about how we should just probably pack our guys up and leave because this is going to blow up in front of us and it's going to blow a lot of our guys in harm's way. And to put another layer on top of this, Israel's been attacking into Syria and Iraq also, um, as well as all these different regions. And so you had this uh, defense minister come out and talk about how their fears of a regional escalation is happening in front of them and this is a multi-war uh, multi-front war and how they've literally been under attack from gaza lebanon syria west bank iraq yemen and iran and you're watching um israel um hit damascus which is causing them problems and we're having attacks on us from multiple groups in Syria and Iraq that this is all going to end up turning into a real nightmare uh, soon. But as we go down in the article you realize that um, Israel's being attacked by seven different fronts and they've retaliated in six of these theaters excluding Iran at this time. And so Israel is in the process of trying to defend themselves as, po as best as they can against basically seven different fronts at this time. And this retaliatory war on the Mosque-controlled Gaza Strip has already become one of the most destructive conflicts in the 21st century with estimated um, estimates suggesting that more than 20,600 people have been killed. That's Hamas's information um, that they're putting out. And 55,000 injured and 85% of the Palestinian territory of 2.3 million people are forced to flee their homes. So the thing you need to take away from that is that this isn't going away anytime soon. And as this becomes a harsher and harsher battle for Israel to try to eliminate these problems and these two different fronts that they're dealing with in Lebanon um, and that area of Hamas in the south. This is just going to create more carnage on the ground, which is going to get more blowback from the international community, which is then going to condemn his, uh, Israel uh, further. And we're going to see this just escalate on multiple levels as Turkey's getting ready to walk into this through the Kurdish lines and then enter this battle. Um, we're going to see a lot happening on the ground here. This is extremely complex. There's a lot of working parts. It's affecting uh, water bodies like the Mediterranean Sea, the Red Sea, the Persian Gulf, all these different fronts. Uh, different uh, avenues of trade are being shut down 
you're watching fuel prices move up and all this is high, going to hyperinflate things as we move forward and I just did a video about how that's going to affect the third seal of Revelation and how uh, the governments are talking about deflation how this is correcting itself but if you go out and actually look at what's happening you're watching a hyperinflationary uh, situation uh, occur in front of you and that is not going to change that's going to get worse so if you haven't put your oil in your lamp you need to do that you need to get ready you need to watch the courage you need to watch all these different fronts moving at the same time and realize that basically a quarter of the world is being affected under war just in this one area and then you have other wars out here to think about um, that are affecting other areas also i know i don't get into a lot of that because they don't really matter to biblical prophecy because this all revolves around the middle east so god bless everybody be safe out there keep your eye on everything I wanted to throw this report down because you're watching this major ramp up of Turkey on the Kurds and that does matter because Daniel 8 is getting ready to happen. So God bless. Have a great night.